Hey, how's it going guys? John here from the Reaper blog. Today I have a little cycle action action and this is dealing with the mixer views. So if we go over to the master track, there are these three toggles here, show sends when size permits, show effects inserts when size permits, and show effects parameters when size permits. And I noticed that if you have all of these off, like this, you can get a large fader view. So I think that's a pretty useful thing to have. Now, getting back to my normal view, I don't want to have to go through the menu, right-clicking on the master track and getting back to my normal view. That's a little annoying. So what I'd set up in the cycle action editor is a set of different states. So from the action list, I can show only my effects parameters and it will hide the effects inserts and it will hide the sends. I can do faders only. I can do inserts and sends, which is kind of my default. I can do inserts only, inserts, sends, effects parameters, which is kind of like everything, and then sends only that we see just the sends. That's the first thing that I had to set up. And don't worry, this is stuff that I can share with you and it will be in the Reaper blog newsletter subscribers download and also for my patrons. So um, this will be easier for you to install and use uh, if you find this interesting. All right, so then I have a cycle action called cycle mixer views. And so this just goes through those different states one at a time. So I've got this assigned to command option control M. So I can just hit that six times and see all six of those combinations. I had to make these ones first because I just couldn't visualize all those different states that could be possible in the cycle action editor. Let's just look at the, one of the first ones, the uh, mixer view fader only. So I have this checking if the mixer toggle is on. So if it's on, it's going to turn it off. It's gonna run that action again to toggle it, so it turns that off. If the effects inserts is on, it's going to turn it off. Then if the show sends is on, it's going to turn it off. So that turns all three of those toggles off and that leaves just the fader. So when I run that, it looks like that. Full size faders, really cool. So the other ones are essentially the same, but I'm just changing one of them. So if it's off, if show effects inserts is off, then it's going to turn it on. And so these other ones will, uh, will turn off if they were already on. So you can run these in any order and uh, I'm pretty sure I've covered every possibility there. So uh, th there's a set of those that you'll get. These six actions here will uh, be available when you import to sections main. Then I've got this other one, cycle mixer views. And now this looks complicated because this is all of those six actions put into one and then exploded. I'll just quickly show you kind of what I did. So I added a cycle action, cycle mixer views two. And then I open up the action list and I get those effects parameters only, add selected statement, faders only, add selected action, inserts and sends, add selected action. And you get the point. I just did that for the six things. And then I put in a step, insert step, and then another step. And so that there, that one would do three. Now, if I hit apply, I'm gonna get a warning. Warning, cycle mixer views to section main has been registered, but it could be improved. Details, the identifier string SNM cycle action 59 cannot be shared with other users. Tip, right click this command, exploit into individual actions. So it's going to give you a warning if you try to use a cycle action inside of a, another cycle action. I mean, it's fine if you wanna use it on your own system, but because I wanna share it with you guys, got to explode those. And I don't think I've shown this aspect in any other video I've made. So uh, right click, explode into individual actions, and this will work with both custom actions and cycle actions. So if we explode, that puts all of those individual steps replacing the cycle action in here. 
Yeah, so as long as there's a step between each time you hit that keyboard shortcut, it's going to run uh, the next chunk of code. I think this is a really useful thing. I haven't seen anyone else do it yet, so uh, I thought it'd be a good thing to talk about, a good thing to share with you guys. And so that's it for this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've learned something. And once again, this stuff will be available for download if you were on the Reaper blog newsletter or if you were a patron. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. You can support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.